Recording started. Testing. One, two, three. This is the sound test to ensure everyone can hear. Testing. One, two, three. Good evening. We are excited to share more information about Ohio's implementation of electronic visit verification, or EVV, with you. My name is Julie Evers, and I am the EVV policy lead for the Ohio Department of Medicaid. We're going to start with a couple of housekeeping items. All attendees will be put on mute. To ask a question, select the Q&A icon in the top right corner of your screen. Then type in your question. We will respond to as many questions as possible within the available time at the end of the presentation. For, easy, <coughs> excuse me, for easier viewing, you may click the expand icon in the event window to make the presentation larger on your screen. To get back to the window where the Q&A box displays, Hover over the top middle of your screen to see the event bar. Click Return. Today's presentation is going to address the following questions. Who is using electronic visit verification? Why are we using electronic visit verification? Why did Ohio Medicaid choose to use a mobile device to capture visit information? What are the benefits to you, and what comes next? First, we will talk about who is using electronic visit verification today. EVV requirements apply to specific Medicaid services. If you receive the following services, you will use electronic visit verification. Personal care services reimbursed through either the Medicaid state plan or the Ohio Home Care Waiver. Nursing services reimbursed through either the Medicaid state plan or the Ohio Home Care Waiver. And home care attendant services provided through the Ohio Home Care Waiver. If you are enrolled in a waiver operated by either the Ohio Department of Aging or the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities and also use state plan services, you will use EVV only for those state plan services subject to EVV requirements. Services provided through Medicaid Managed Care or MyCare Ohio are not included at this time. Services provided to a group of individuals at the same time are also currently excluded from EVV requirements. If you are using services subject to EVV requirements, you might be using an EVV device already. If not, your provider will ask a device be sent to you at your home. Your caregiver will use the device to enter both the start and end times of the visit. At the end of the visit, you will be asked to confirm both the service provided and the time that the service was provided. You can either sign your name on the device screen or use the voice recording feature to confirm the visit. We have a short video on the EVV website that describes EVV basics and the steps in using EVV. The icon to access the video looks like the picture on your screen. Next, we will talk about why Ohio Medicaid implemented electronic visit verification. Congress established EVV requirements for all state Medicaid programs in the 21st Century Cures Act. The Cures Act says that EVV must be used for personal care services by January 1, 2019, and for home health services by January 1st, 2023. If Ohio Medicaid fails to meet these deadlines, CMS will reduce the federal funding Ohio receives for the Medicaid program.
Electronic Visit Verification, or EVV, is a system which electronically verifies visits for some home and community-based services. The 21st Century Cures Act identifies the following data elements that must be captured. The type of service performed, where the service is performed, the individual receiving the service, the individual providing the service, and the date and time the service starts and ends. Now we will explain why Ohio Medicaid chose to use the mobile device to capture visit information. The device you receive or will receive is a phone that has been repurposed. All the features you expect to find on a phone have been removed. But because it was designed to be a phone, you will see camera lenses on the front and back of the device. Those cameras are used for device configuration and are disabled before the device is sent to you. The microphone is only enabled to capture your voice verification when the visit is verified. The microphone cannot record anything that happens in your home. The GPS location is used only at the start and end of the visit. No GPS information is recorded during the visit or when a visit is not taking place. Ohio chose a mobile device for the EVV initiative because it is important that you be able to receive services wherever you choose. For example, an approach that used a landline in your home could limit your ability to participate in your community. Because the device is only used when the visit is started and when the visit is ended, you can leave the device at home most of the time. You only need to take the device with you if the service will start or end while you are away from your home. We know that many of you lead busy lives and often receive services in places other than your home. Your provider can enter as many addresses as they like so that the EBV system will recognize those places. We suggest that providers enter all addresses where you frequently or routinely receive services to make the process as seamless as possible. If you do receive services at an address that the EBV system does not associate with you, it is a simple process for your provider to document the place of service in the EBV web portal. Now we'll take a quick look at the EBV device in the internet-based system. The first thing your caregiver will do when they begin a visit is log in using his or her individual login identifier and password. Then your caregiver will find you in the system using either your Medicaid ID or the unique identifier assigned to you by the SAN data system. The next thing your caregiver does is select the service he or she is providing using this drop-down menu. Then your caregiver will start the visit. It should only take a couple of minutes from the time he or she starts logging into the device and the time your caregiver starts the visit. When your caregiver selects Start Visit, the EBV system captures the time and the location where the device is at the start of the visit. At this point, your caregiver can log out of the device. If he or she chooses not to log out, your caregiver will be logged out automatically after five minutes. When your caregiver is done providing services, he or she will log back into the device. This screen will appear and he or she can select the button labeled Complete Visit. When your caregiver selects Complete Visit, the end time and the location of the device at the end of the visit are recorded. Then your caregiver will ask you to verify the visit. Note that if you are asleep 
or otherwise unable to provide confirmation, he or she can skip this step. Your caregiver will hand you the device. You can select the language you prefer and then the screen will appear. You will confirm or deny both the service and the visit times by selecting the appropriate button. Then you hit continue. You will see the visit summary. If you want to change the details of your confirmation, you can go back. Otherwise, you will select the confirm button. If you choose to provide an electronic signature, you will sign right on the screen using your finger. After you sign, hit continue. Otherwise, you can select the button labeled voice recording just above the signature box. If you choose to provide a voice recording, this screen will appear after you select the voice recording button. Hit the big red button in the middle of the screen and say your name and the date. Press the red button again to stop recording. This screen appears to let you know that your verification information was saved. Notice that your caregiver cannot tell whether you confirmed or denied the information they recorded with the device. Now you can hand the device back to your caregiver. You may hear your caregiver or provider talk about using the SAN data web-based system to correct or manage visit information. Before your caregiver uses the device to record visit information, your provider should create your record in the system using this screen. Only your name, Medicaid ID, and home address are required. As we talked about earlier, we recommend that providers enter all addresses where you will frequently or routinely receive services. We also recommend that providers enter at least one telephone number, just in case telephony is used as an alternative to the device. This system is an important tool that allows providers to see the information captured, to correct information if necessary, and to provide additional explanation if something about the visit is unexpected. Examples of things that might require additional explanation include a time when a caregiver forgets to start or end a visit, a time when your verification is not captured, or a time when the location at the start or end of the visit is not associated with your record. This is the screen your provider uses to see all their visits. The red dots indicate things that require additional explanation. Sometimes these are called exceptions. This screen is an example used in training, so it has a lot of red dots. So providers had a chance to get lots of practice. As providers become familiar with the system, in most cases, they shouldn't have very many red dots that require more explanation. If your provider clicks on the little pencil at the end of the row, more information about the visit will show up on the screen. This is the screen that shows up when your provider clicks on the pencil. It gives them all the information that has been recorded about the visit and makes it easy for the provider to move around the system to provide any additional information that is necessary. If your provider clicks on GPS, it shows a map with the information that was collected. The blue marker indicates your home address. If GPS information is collected at the start or end of the visit and the address is known to the system, a green marker will appear at the location of the visit. If GPS information is collected at the start or end of the visit and the address is not known to the system, a red marker will appear on the map. A red marker means the provider has to explain where they were. 
sometimes your provider has to enter information to complete a visit. For example, if your caregiver forgets to start a visit, the provider might enter a start time. At other times, your provider just needs to acknowledge that something unexpected happened. Examples include times when the location of the visit is not associated with you in the system or when your verification of the visit is not captured for some reason. Whenever your provider enters information about a visit, changes information about a visit, or acknowledges that something unexpected happened, your provider will use a reason code to explain what happened. There are lots of choices, even other, so any circumstance can be documented appropriately. Now let's talk about the benefits to you. In addition to complying with the CARES Act, ODM has two goals for the implementation of EVV. The first goal is to provide a tool to promote quality outcomes for individuals using home and community-based services. The EVV system will provide information about visits in near real time. This will help ODM ensure you are receiving the medically necessary services you need sooner than they could before EVV was implemented. The second goal is to improve payment accuracy. In July of this year, ODM will begin using visit information captured through EVV in the claims adjudication process. This will mean that we can make sure Medicaid payments are only for the services provided. We will catch those instances when a claim is for more time than was really spent providing you services, or when a provider submits a claim for a visit that never happened. EVP is also an important tool to help prevent fraud in the Medicaid program. About 36% of all fraud cases reported involve home and community-based services. About 60% of all fraud convictions in Ohio are related to home and community-based services. And experts believe that the amount of fraud in the system significantly exceeds the amount of fraud reported. Finally, let's talk about what's next. Many of you have already received an EVV device and your caregiver is using it to record visit information. As we mentioned, the devices are repurposed cell phones manufactured by either Caterpillar or LG. They use an Android operating system and have large screens. If you receive services subject to EVV requirements and have not received a device, your provider can go online to request that a device be mailed to your home. It will come in a box like this with a label on the outside about 48 hours after the device is requested. Inside the box, you will find the device, a charger, a quick reference guide, and a short letter about EVV. The letter in the box includes pictures showing where to plug in the charger and where to find the power button. It also includes instructions if you want to obtain the letter in another language. An inventory sticker is on the back of the device. It includes numbers for the Medicaid consumer hotline and the EVV provider hotline. It also includes a toll-free number you can use to report suspected Medicaid fraud. The number for reporting fraud can be used to report any suspected fraud, not just fraud related to EVV. If a device is ordered for you, it will be delivered by Federal Express. They will ask that you or someone at your home sign to show that you received the device. If no one is home when the device is delivered, the driver will leave a note on your door. You can check a box on the note that asks Federal Express to leave the device without signature on the second delivery attempt. If no one is home on the second attempt, 
and the note allowing delivery without signature is not on your door, the device will be returned to Sandata. If your device isn't working correctly, is lost or is stolen, tell your provider. Your provider will notify Sandata. If your device is broken, you will receive return materials in the mail. Those materials can be used to send the broken device back at no cost to you. You will just need to put the device and charger in the mailer, seal it, and drop it in any mailbox. In all cases, another device will be provided at no cost to you or your provider. Once you receive your EVV device, please try to make sure it is easily available to your caregiver for each visit. This will help your caregiver get started with providing your services quickly when they arrive. If you are no longer going to receive services subject to EVV requirements, your provider will contact Sandata and let them know. You will receive shipping materials that will allow you to return the device at no cost to you. Just put the device and charger in the mailer, seal it, and drop it in any mailbox. I know we went through a lot of information very quickly. Many of you have submitted questions. We will answer as many as we can in the time allotted. If you have a question and haven't submitted it, please do so now. If you are listening on the phone and aren't able to type your question, you can send it to the EVB mailbox at any time. The email address is on the ODM EVB webpage. And of course, you can always call the consumer hotline with questions related to Medicaid. Question. If my aide runs errands for me, does she take the device with her? If your aide is permitted to run errands for you, he or she will not need to take the device with them. The device is only needed at the beginning and end of the visit. Question. My patient ID is confidential to me. And my doctor, how does my aide know my ID? Answer. Providers are required to know certain pieces of information in order to conduct business with Medicaid. Medicaid ID is one piece of information your provider should know. They also have the ability to enter in your SAN data assigned SAN tracks ID instead of the Medicaid ID. Once we receive the device, must we begin using it immediately? It is recommended that your provider begin using the device once you receive it. But telephony is a backup option in the event the device is unavailable. Question, would this be for 24-hour houses? Currently, EVV does not apply to any services in the DODG waivers which is where I think you'd find a, 20, a daily rate or a 24-hour service. Um, we will be working with the Department of Developmental Disabilities closely in the coming weeks as we develop the business rules to implement EVV for phase two. Question, why not use surprise visits instead of the device? Really for two reasons. The first is that we have up to 3 million individuals eligible to receive home and community-based services in Ohio through the state plan. ODM does not have the resources for surprise visits. But more importantly, federal law requires Ohio Medicaid to implement electronic verification, visit verification for select Medicaid services in order to maintain their federal funding for those services.
Thank you for waiting. We're reviewing the question so we can give complete and accurate answers. Is it possible the device could be hacked and the camera be used or the microphone? The device has the same secure, is subject to the same security requirements that all systems used in Ohio Medicaid are subject to. The device health is monitored and we would be alerted if anything out of the ordinary was happening in the devices. When taking my patient to the doctor, do we sign out there and then sign back in when we return home? If the individual to whom you provide services is enrolled in the Ohio Home Care Waiver, you should work with your care manager to, de to determine what's appropriate in this circumstance. If you were providing any type of service to the individual during the time at the doctor, you should not have to log out. What does EVV Phase 2 involve? Phase 2 will include services provided through the passport waiver administered by the Ohio Department of Aging, the IO Level 1 and SELF waivers administered by DODD, traditional Medicaid managed care, and MyCare Ohio. During the work to implement phase two, we will be addressing some new issues, including group visits. If we do not want the device in our home, but still want to have an aid visit, can we choose not to have it in our home? The device is available for any reason, your provider has the option to use telephony. Work with your care manager to document a refusal to use the device and the alternate method that will be the primary data recording method in your care plan. If there are any other questions, please submit them at this time. Just to clarify, you mentioned that EVV Phase 2 is for individual options providers. When does EVV Phase 2 get implemented? We are currently working with our partners for Phase 2 and SAN Data to finalize the timeline. We anticipate implementation in late fall of 2018. Question. My patient cannot sign his name, and he is increasingly having a difficult time talking. Will there be another way to verify his signature at some point? If the individual to whom you provide services is unable to use either the voice recording or the signature, you can skip the verification on the device or with telephony. In that case, an exception will be generated. When you clear that exception, choose the remark, choose the reason code that indicates that the individual was unable to provide confirmation. As an alternative, you may want to work with your care manager to identify an alternate individual who can provide verification on behalf of the person to whom you are providing services. Question, if the consumer started off using the system and then changes her mind and wants to use telephony, 
can they switch at any time? If the device becomes unavailable for any reason at any time in the program, telephony is a backup method a provider can use. If the device is not going to be used for any reason, please contact SAN Data to arrange to have the device returned. Again, if there are any questions, please submit them at this time. Thank you for taking time to join us this evening. We appreciate your interest in electronic visit verification. Please contact the EVV mailbox at the address found on our website if additional questions occur in the future. Thank you.